Greg was older than I was. Uh, he and his brothers, they were all a little bit older than I was. Uh, he, we hung out every once in a while, um, you know, when we were kids. Uh, as we got older, we kind of drifted apart, but we still kept in contact. Um, he, uh, he was a very smart man, very smart. Uh, he, uh, I think he was a member of Mensa. I think he, he was in that organization. He uh, was a truck driver. He was very, uh, very well loved at his job. They, they loved him and appreciated him there. He was always willing to help them and do whatever they needed to do there. Uh, he was just a, a very well-liked person, no matter what he did. Uh, he uh, married, of course, to his wife Donna and two kids, Thomas and Ruthie. Uh, and it kind of broke that family after he passed away. From what I understand, um, the, uh, the driver was intoxicated. Uh, he'd just been released from a 120-day drug and alcohol treatment program. and uh, From our understanding, he was out celebrating his release. Uh, and he crossed the median, I think it was on Emanuel Cleaver Boulevard, uh, crossed the median and hit uh, Greg and his family head-on in their car. Uh, Greg had taken his kids down to see Shakespeare in the Park. They, they did a lot of family stuff together. Uh, they, uh, they enjoyed each other's company and, and they went out to see Shakespeare in the park and they were coming home. And that's when uh, this gentleman crossed the median and hit him straight on. Uh, that, it, it was a head-on collision, almost no time to react of, of any kind. He had multiple convictions prior to this. He had uh, been released, uh, he'd been convicted of a, an offense, and I'm sorry, I don't remember what the offense he was released on, I don't remember that right now. Uh, but he'd been given a 120-day institutional treatment center program, which is through the Department of Corrections where they get drug and alcohol treatment. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that he'd had a long history. That was a domestic violence conviction. Right, conviction. that was a domestic violence conviction. And that he was then given the opportunity to get drug treatment and alcohol treatment. Uh, and that once we were looked into the timing, he had just been released from that treatment uh, and was out celebrating, was out drinking. He'd, he'd had uh, a long history through uh, the system. He'd been uh, through there quite a bit. Yeah, um, He'd been on probation multiple times, I think. I don't remember how many exactly, but he'd been on probation you know, multiple times throughout the system, throughout, those, throughout his adult life. I've been a criminal defense attorney for over 20 years. Uh, I strongly believe that everyone has a right to a strong, strong defense if they're charged with a crime. I believe everyone's innocent until they're proven guilty. And in this case, Mr. Schultz pled guilty, so he admitted his responsibility. Uh, but I believe that uh, as a defense attorney, uh, everyone should have the right to have their attorney who is vigorously defending them. Uh, and as uh, someone who's had a loss in their family, I also understand the need to make sure that if someone is found guilty or pled guilty, that they also are treated correctly in the system, uh, that both sides are treated fairly and both sides have a voice. Uh, and like I said, in, in this case, this wasn't a trial. Mr. Schote admitted what he did. so. I felt strongly that he did do what he what he, he was claimed to have done and uh, wanted to make sure that my voice was heard and the family's voice was heard when we went to sentencing.